you know, the Nigerian kind of born again that do not believe in speaking the truth because, you know, the pastor is the touch not my anointed. When we say touch not my anointed, this is supposed to be a pastor that is anointed. Why are they touching him? The anointed is touching the anointed. Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Sama. So I saw this post uh, about a Nigerian pastor that was sacked by Winners Chapel. Uh, that's the Yedipos Church. And he decided to sue them, right? I find it a bit funny. Okay, but let me read it to you guys how it is on the news. So I'm reading this one from the Daily Post, right? So it says, uh, sack living faith pastor drags Bishop Oyedeko others to court, alleges frustration, maltreatment by church cabal. So the church said, get their own cabal, right? Okay, it says, a pastor of Living Faith Church, also known as Winners Chapel, Calabar, uh, uh, Dominic Esang Winner, that's his name, has alleged that the cabal in the church has been persecuting, maltreating, and frustrating him. Although he has spent two decades in the church and now has six branches under him. He said um, he spoke in an interview in Calabar after he sued the church and it's found that David Oyedeko for not following the mandate slash operational manual used by the ministry to fire airing staff. And he went further to co complain that the gang up and lies against him led to termination of his appointment as resident pastor of Palm Street Extension Parish, Calabar. Uh, he says uh, he has therefore dragged the church before the National Industrial Court of Nigeria, um, Calabar uh, Judicial Division, for alleged unlawful termination of his appointment. In, in lawsuit number, blah, 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 um, suing founder of Living Faith, Church Worldwide Incorporated, Bishop David Oyedepo, Adebisi Aboluwade, and other two defendants for 350 million naira compensation. The dismissed pastor, a maths statistics graduate of the University of Calabar, said he was bitter, not because he has been sacked, but because it did not follow due process of the church. Esang or Isang was sad that the effort to let the general overseer of the ministry, Dr. David Odepo, uh, Oyedepo, wade into the matter was highly frustrated by the cabals. That means they didn't allow him to reach Oyedepo. And then he says, uh, Isang said, I was a member of that church for over a decade before training to become a pastor. At least I have spent more than two decades in the ministry. That alone makes me a son to our general overseer. Now they deceive on herself, a son. The man knows his children when it comes to sons. He knows who his children are. Okay. Then he says, uh, uh, Bishop David Oyedepo, according to him, the church cabal consists one, Pastor Tamuno Toye Chukunda, and the state pastor, Cross River State, Pastor Adeolu Adewumi. According to the Living Faith's operational mandate, before a pastor is sacked, a search would first be queried in writing and made to appear before a disciplinary committee. Thereafter, three more warnings before he can be issued a termination of appointment letter. In my case, nothing of such happened. I was not given the opportunity to appear before any disciplinary panel to defend myself. As I speak to you, I can't even pay my children's school fees, nor pay my rent, or afford food, clothing, and and medicine for my kids, Essen said. Uh, reacting, state administrative officer of the church, then Taiwo, denied the allegations, saying no section of the operational mandate was violated. The matter comes up for hearing at the National Industrial Court on 25th October 2022. Now to start with, you know, you know, some people feel like, I've seen comments here and there when I saw it on Facebook, and some people were like, oh, you can't sue a church, but can you sack a pastor? Spiritual thing cannot go to court. You're not supposed to sue uh, in, in the things of church. Are you supposed to sack? Jesus had 12 disciples. How many of them did he sack? Since, you see, sacking is something for companies and businesses and whatever, establishments. It's something they do. So if the church can now start operating like the world, like they said, you know, they say spiritual, you know, life and the world. So if the church can now do what the world does, by sacking. What is wrong in the man then following the particular worldly whatever to sue? Let's be honest, right? This is a man that this, that was his livelihood for 20 years. To sack somebody suddenly, according to him, oh, he said they didn't follow the due process. So people that are saying that he's lying, it's left for them to go to court 
Abi, and then the judge can look and, and see if they follow the due process. So for those that want to attack him for suing, before they attack him for suing, they should first of all ask themselves, is it, did, did Jesus sue any disciples? Should churches be suing people left, right and center? At the same time, he, 20 years is a long time. For him not to, that is the thing. The mega geo at the top is made forever. Him and his generations on board are made. And then the pastors working under them are still living from hand to mouth. That when they are sacked, it's not the first time, they sack them suddenly. They go from wherever to square one. Once they sack them, they kick them out of, the, out of the accommodation. Their salaries are everything. Sudden life change for these people. It's not easy. You can't sack people like that. You understand? There must be a process. Let's be honest. For those that don't get it, since they have turned church things to business, Jesus industry, that is what it is right now. If a pastor is not productive, he's not bringing more church members, he's not whatever, they sack. Remember they sacked how many people last time? During pandemic. People they sacked immediately after pandemic, I mean, during pandemic. So, since they want to not handle the church like a worldly business, like a, a, a company, then the, the workers, the employees, because they're supposed to be people that are called by God, so they're actually being employed. <laughs> so when these pastors called, to be pastors or they were employed to be pastors so as long as let's put that in mind but at the same time you know when you talk some people will be saying one thing one thing one thing let me tell you guys you see this guy that was sacked after 20 years if he was the son of Oye Depo, there, there's no way he will be sacked who will sack the son of any of the sons i think he has two sons who will sack the sons of Oye Depo? but the everyday man can be sacked and people cannot open their eyes and see what's going on when we say it's family business, so people say Kine, family business because they will hand over to their sons when they are leaving. When they retire or whatever they call it, we've seen it going on left, right and center. A lot of them, they are, look at, they are handing over to their sons. So, you see, when it comes to the individual responding to what has been done to him, people now say, ah, God did not call you in the first place. How can you sue a church? But when the church decides to sack them, nobody says, God did not call you guys in the first place. If God called you guys, your selection process should be so good because now God tell you who you should appoint to be a pastor. I mean, don't be so. Don't be so. Is it not God that should have told them who they should appoint or who should, who should be a pastor because it's God that does all the calling. So if in the selection process, they did not consult God to get it right, are they really, are they really hearing from God? Now, the guy is sacked. The guy said they didn't follow procedures you know my only worry is what if he goes to court and the judge is a, a, a member of a winner's chapel do you think this guy will get justice if he gets to court and the judge is a, a member of winner's chapel i doubt it or what if the judge is a you know the nigerian kind of born again that do not believe in speaking the truth because you know the pastor is the touch not my anointed when we say touch not my anointed he's supposed to be a pastor that is anointed why are they touching him the anointed is touching the anointed so the touch not my anointed, it only applies to your overhead pastor. What about this guy? He's supposed to be anointed. He was a pastor for 20 years. He's the anointed. Nobody's not a talker. So if you guys call them the anointed, why is this pastor, why is he being touched? Why is he being sacked? And you're wondering why he's going to court. Because let me tell you, they give them enough to survive. They may give them free accommodation, free this, sometimes maybe free education, maybe you for their children. Once they cut them off, they cut them off in all of these things. So all of a sudden, the person goes from wherever to zero. So you, why are you surprised he's going to court? How is he going to feed his family? He has no other source of income at the moment. You can say, go and look for a job. It's going to take a while. Before he gets the job, he has, to, he has to survive for the meantime. And you wonder, what do you want him? How do you want him to survive? You want him to turn to bandit. So there's something called unlawful dismissal. So because it's a church, it doesn't make them above the law. Like I said, I don't know if you can get justice in a country like Nigeria. You're talking about being ganged up or whatever. You will not play a recording of a pastor that was sacked in one of these churches too. One big church in Nigeria. Was it not Paul NHS church that they sacked this guy? But this guy, he went for a meeting and he was recording them secretly. Did we not talk about that one here? Did we not talk about the, some of the things they were saying to him when they didn't know him, that he, they were being recorded? And then we talk about the world. You say the word, and then you come into a place that's supposed to be a church, and you see the worse atrocities happening in the churches than that is happening in the world. I made a video which I was saying the corruption is everywhere in Nigeria, not only in the politics, even in churches. So much has happened to show people that 
Churches belong to the, what they say, the founder or the GO. It belongs to them. Every other person is there to assist in the building of this empire for their children and their generations unborn. That's what it is. Every other person is just there to help build up this empire for these people. They are unsackable, unquestionable. There are many gods. Them and their families, their children are unquestionable. Tell me a Nigerian pastor that his son has ever been sacked. Are, are their children perfect? So other people's sons are okay to be sacked and left jobless out of nowhere. But the pastor's children are unsackable. Anyways, I saw that I wanted to share it. You know, like I keep saying, some of these things shows us that it's no longer business as usual. There was a time no pastor would have dared speak up about being sacked. Not to talk, everyone taking them to court. They will fear if I take him to court, my own is over. People are becoming braver and able to speak up about the injustice and the atrocities they see in churches. I've been saying it for the longest time. Things are not going to be the same forever. People's eyes are opening. And their people's eyes will keep opening. Because Nigerians are fed up of being used, manipulated by politicians and the so-called mega GOs or anybody in any authority or in any, you know, power or whatever. People are becoming fed up. You know what they say? People are tired of being tired of nonsense. No, people are realizing, you see this life, nobody came here as an escort. Why should you and your family have great life? And other people's children can be tossed up and down. And yeah, I think I've said all I want to say. I wanted to share that with you guys. This is how I feel about it. And as always, whatever your opinions are, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.